Do you know what they call alternative medicine that's been proven to work? Medicine. Welcome to the Holistic Healing Collective Podcast, a show about energy healing, holistic, and plant medicine. Our passion is healing on all levels. You'll hear guests from doctors, yoga teachers, energy healers, researchers, coaches, and real people who've recovered from serious debilitating health conditions, getting to the root of the problem and solving it. This is not medical advice. Welcome to the Holistic Healing Collective Podcast. And now your host, William Dickinson. Hello and welcome to the Holistic Healing Collective Podcast. In this episode, I will be swapping places with William Dickinson and I will interview him. Uh, so welcome, William. Thank um, you for having me, Joanna. <laughs> you introduce yourself. Okay, so I'm William, fiancé, and, um, and, is- and my name is Joanna Silva. Um, and I think that he's a very good guest that should be interviewed on my own podcast on your own podcast yeah. so um tell me a bit about you how did you get into this so that's quite a good question origin story so i was absolutely debilitated i had so many different chronic illnesses i absolutely could not function i was blinded i was bedridden i had every gastrointestinal problem you could imagine. I went to see every specialist, every doctor, and I basically just got heads heads scratched and shoulders shrugged shrugged at me. Nobody had a clue what was going on. Nobody gave me any real direction or insight, and any of the suggestions just made me worse. Medication wasn't an option for me. So from there, I kind of had to figure this all out by myself. And being in a place where I'm completely debilitated on full-time benefits. So I have a full-time carer. I'm on maximum disability benefits. And every day is just a living nightmare. I can remember for over a year consecutively, I just basically wished I could die every single day. So my life was just a living hell. And if I knew that's what my life would be like forever, I am absolutely certain I would have killed myself back then because... I couldn't, that wasn't life for me. That's not what the life I wanted to live. Yeah? Yes. I was just uh, wondering, um, if your life was hell, how did you manage to get into this? So, as I said, I was, I was blinded and bedridden. So I was laying in bed 23 and a half hours a day. And sometimes I'd spend time on the sofa just laying down and my dad would load... YouTube videos, literally, if you if there's a, a video on YouTube about gut health, I've watched it. If there's a video on YouTube about chronic fatigue syndrome, I've watched it. I have watched everything on YouTube that there is about alternative holistic healing. To take it a step further from that, you can't just figure everything out from videos. You need science. So my dad would take documents from Google Scholarly. So these are scientifically referenced articles. And he would put them in a text-to-speak program. And he would just play them for me non-stop like I can remember they would he he and my brother would go out for shopping or something and he would just leave we called it jazz speaker this was the app that he used he would load jazz up with all of these these articles and I would just lay there for an hour two hours while they were out shopping and I would just be downloading all of this information into my brain and everything that was relevant for me has just stuck like it's just in my brain now I can recall the most random obscure things and it gives me a a really unique position because not only have I been through the gates of hell going through a chronic illness like this and recovering but I actually remember very intrinsically every single step of my process and everything that worked for me and all of these ideas and I mean there's a bit of brain fog throughout the whole process I'm sure anybody struggling with a chronic illness can relate but I have an uncanny mind for this and this is how I know this is this is what I'm supposed to be doing so everything that I learned is just stuck. It's just in my brain now. And I learn that as I continue working with clients and even on myself, healing is a journey. You never get to the end. You just keep getting better about it, but you never get to the end. 
And as I keep learning myself and with my clients, it all just sticks. And then I just have it as a repository of information that I can just use to help help other people with, which is a pretty, pretty handy skill. So you learn a lot yep. while you were suffering. Um, something that was like the sunlight, right? Yes. What was that? The only thing that kept me going was the thought that it might not be like this forever. Okay. That was it. So you have a chronic disease. Um, do you have an name for it, by the way? My, officially, I never had a diagnosis. My, my benefits letters, so the, the, the documents that were coming from the medical side of things that was being given to the, like the benefits office, the people that, that handle finances in, in England. All, on my sick notes, my medical certificates, all it said was medically unexplained symptoms. And that gives you a really good idea of how little they were actually able to help me. I was never even able to obtain a, a really helpful diagnosis. Some of the diagnoses I did get were IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome, gastritis. They, would, they said mild gastritis. To me, I was managing it very well. So very restrictive diet, doing absolutely everything I could to minimize and control the symptoms. So what to them appeared as mild, if I were eating anything that I wanted, and I probably would have been worse. So mild gastritis, IBS, and I had a lot of issues with fatigue. So I never actually officially got a diagnosis, but I'm absolutely certain I had chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, so that's uh, CFS ME, myalgic cephalomyelitis. I never received a full diagnosis, but I'm absolutely confident if I connected with the right professional when I was in the, the, the heat of my symptoms, that is the diagnosis I very likely would have, would have had. Okay, so you are saying that you didn't connect with the right professionals. You are saying to me that you connected with traditional medicine. Yeah. What was the path that you made? To, with all the knowledge that you were accumulating, with mm -hmm. how did you, you know, what was the path that you made to today that allowed you to recover? Well, that's a long story, and we could talk for hours about that. I would say, first of all, it's it's generally quite easy to obtain a diagnosis through mainstream medicine as long as you just keep jumping through the hoops that they throw you through. So you keep doing all of the testing, keep going to see all of the people that they send you to. Eventually, you'll end up at a diagnosis. But for me, I reached a point where I really lost a lot of trust with mainstream medicine because, uh, so I, I remember this, and I actually have this written in my short ebook called The Five Biggest Blocks to True Healing. If you are looking for healing, definitely check that book out. It's, it's everything you need to get started. The first point in that is taking responsibility. And I was in this really interesting place where my health was going really bad. And I didn't want to take responsibility for it. And, but everything was going bad and no one was really helping me. So I was trying to do things myself. So I started implementing a GAPS diet. So that's the gut and psychology syndrome diet by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. And that really helped me a lot with a lot of my, a lot of my symptoms. It helped me manage things a lot. Didn't fix me. Wasn't the solution in the end, but it really played a massive part and was really helpful. I'm really grateful. Many thanks for that to Dr. Natasha because she really helped start this journey for me so i had at this point doing a gaps diet i had removed all grains from my diet including all gluten and the doctors that i was working with at the time the gastroenterologist wanted to test me for celiac disease and said for you to for us to be able to get accurate testing results you need to reintroduce gluten into your diet so i was in this place where like i knew this was a really bad idea because i knew what would happen i kind of knew what would happen already But I was like, oh, the doctor said it, so I'm going to do it. So I just trusted blindly what the doctors were saying. And it was kind of nice, you know, to go on a really restrictive diet and then be able to add like pasta and biscuits back in your diet. I mean, really nice. They're the nice foods, They're enjoyable. So I added them back in. And within four days, I started having blood in my stool and something just clicked for me. It was like, nobody can care about me. No one can care about my health situation or my health problems as much as I can. Because he can say, You go away, you go home, you eat gluten for four weeks and then we test you for antibodies and I'm the one having bloody diarrhea or severely constipated or any of my symptoms. He, he doesn't care. He's with his family. He's doing what he wants. He's on holiday. It doesn't affect him, but it does affect me. And this made me realize that your health is your responsibility, whether you accept it or not. So even if you are pretending that it is a doctor's responsibility, 
he just goes on holiday and he doesn't care that much about you. He doesn't have to. It's not his responsibility. He has a duty of care and he's going to do the best he can to take care of you. But ultimately, you're the one that has to deal with the symptoms. You're the one that has to deal with all the negative consequences of all of your actions if they're not the right actions for you. And for me, that's what made it click. And that's what made me sort of detach a little bit from mainstream medicine and stop pursuing the diagnosis. Because I knew that in order to pursue that diagnosis, I would have to continue jumping through all these hoops. And I, 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 did, I personally did not care about diagnosis. I just wanted to not feel bad all the time. I wanted to achieve healing. And I, from what I could tell, they weren't focused on that. They were focused on giving me a diagnostic label so they could prescribe me medication, which wasn't actually going to solve the problem. And I wanted to solve the problem. So instead, I, I opened my mind. I tried lots of different things. I've worked with countless professionals. I've worked with a kinesiologist. I've worked with osteopaths. I've worked with Nate practitioner. I've worked with chiropractor. I've worked with um, I literally almost every single one. Reiki. I've done, I even learned Reiki myself. I'm a practitioner now. I've done somatic experiencing. I've done hypnosis. I've done family constellations therapy. Like I have tried so many different things because it was like, okay, what they're saying doesn't work. And then I started to trust my instincts and go towards what I felt pulled to try. So this was like working with m m orientating more towards functional medicine. So I did try working with a practitioner. It wasn't, she, she wasn't the right practitioner for me. I was a very complicated case. Her suggestions were very generic. And I find that is not an uncommon thing because if you are in a, a complicated situation, it's very hard for a practitioner, even if they've received good training, to be able to empathize and understand where you are. If you're in a more difficult situation, a more niche, more complicated individual, more complicated health situation, it's really helpful to work with somebody that's actually been through the experience because no amount of training can prepare you for what it's actually like to go through a severe chronic illness. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to find anybody, but fortunately, this has actually helped me become one of those people that is now able to really relate and empathize with somebody going through a severely chronic debilitating health condition that they just aren't getting answers for. So nowadays, okay, we have, we have these uh, everywhere that is this word about heal. Okay, there you have books, you have TV shows, you have movies, you have everywhere, everywhere you can see, see the word heal. Mm -hmm. What is for you heal, healing? What okay. is it? So if you asked me this a year ago, it probably would have been different. If you asked me two years ago, it probably would have been different. As I'm aware now, healing is the journey towards authentic self-expression. And that might not click with some people because you might not see how it fits just yet. But if you looked at it through my current perspective, which is every single one of your physical, mental or emotional symptoms is your, your compass, your internal compass that's trying to pull you towards your best life. And your best life is equal to your authentic self-expression. So all of these hopes and dreams and desires and I want to make this much money and I really like this car and I would love to have it. And I want this kind of relationship with two kids and I want to be able to do this for my job and be absolutely in love with it. It's like, you can have all of that, but you have to be expressing yourself authentically. And if you aren't, it will manifest as physical, mental, or emotional health problems. Depression is a really good example. If you're depressed, you might be going in the wrong direction. If you're anxious, you might be going in the wrong direction. If you have physical symptoms, it's your body trying to tell you you're going in the wrong direction. So if you can learn to listen to what the body's actually saying through the physical, mental and emotional symptoms, you learn that you, you can actually become very grateful for your symptoms because you realize that they're trying to help orientate you towards your authentic self-expression, which means you then get to live the life that you absolutely love, where you do the job that you love. You have a relationship that you thoroughly enjoy. You're achieving your hopes and dreams. You're reaching your full potential. So to me now, healing is the pursuit of authentic self-expression. I just have these, these quote in my, not quote, but sentence in my mind that is like uh, immersion and symptoms are like a compass, mm -hmm. right? So if it's pointing you in the direction that you don't want to go, you basically need to adjust yourself. And that's sort of the concept of trauma. So if you look at a baby, 
They don't censor themselves at all. They have no hesitation in screaming, shouting, punching, biting, just expressing themselves fully. But in the process of socialization, where we are praised for certain positive behaviors and reprimanded or punished for certain negative behaviors, we disown parts of ourselves. And in this process of disowning parts of ourselves, they either manifest subconsciously as behavior patterns or behaving in ways that we're not aware of, or they, they get repressed even deeper and they manifest somatically as a physical representation in the body. So there, it's really difficult because socialization is necessary. Like if you're raising kids, you really have to make sure that they behave in a way that's appropriate to you. Like we just, we just adopted the dog and he has many behaviors that we do not like biting, pumping, barking when we're trying to sleep. And if you don't socialize these behaviors out of an animal or out of your children, you will resent them and you will take it out on them in a passive aggressive subconscious way. So it's really important that you're able to socialize your children properly, but you have to make sure that they don't repress their authentic self-expression in the process. So a lot of trauma healing and reintegration is all about getting in touch with these parts of ourselves that we have suppressed subconsciously or repressed somatically and figuring out ways that we can channel this energy in a healthy, socially acceptable way. Oh, that's a bit <laughs> <laughs> um... it's, a, it's a life's process, you know? It's not something you just click your fingers and it's done. You integrate as you go and there's levels and degrees of integration. So I can tell you one of the biggest things I struggle with is rage. And I know that I'm, I would say that from what, what I feel and what I feel aware of, I think I'm only 40% integrated with rage. Mm. But that's enough to make all of those physical manifestations significantly more manageable. So for me, my rage would manifest as fatigue because it's like rage is this very explosive, violent energy. And if you're trying to keep that under containment all the time, you're tired, right? Because you're bursting out this way, and pulling it back refraining the other that's exhausting you got the accelerator on and the brake at the same time you're going to feel exhausted so that's enabled me to have more energy but at the same time i had other symptoms like um gastritis or this gastritis this is where the the metaphysical or emotional connection comes into the gastritis type symptoms that i experienced so it's really interesting your stomach your stomach acid is very representative of your personal power you know, so your stomach acid is what enables you to break your food down. Like you can eat like bone, you can eat really difficult to digest things, right? Difficult situations. And you're able to just go in there and blast through it. You just dissolve it, you liquefy it. And then your acid is bound to it and you're able to just pull all of those nutrients out of the food that you've eaten into your body and build yourself and become strong. And that's what stomach acid does. And metaphorically that, that applies to channeling your rage properly in your life. So this is personal power. This is going after your goals. This is feeling confident and assertive and being able to establish strong boundaries. This is okay with me, this isn't. And if you're gonna behave this way, then that relationship is gonna end kind of thing. So there's a, this gives you examples where I have, maybe I had 100% of my rage was manifesting somatically. And that's why I was having really bad symptoms. Whereas now I feel like I've integrated maybe 40% of that. So now I'm able to channel my rage into hosting a podcast, coaching clients, going live on YouTube, being confident when I'm out, not feeling so anxious because I feel resourceful. So it's like this energy is now channeling consciously and I'm able to tap into it and channel it in a healthy way instead of violent, explosive rage, which would have been socially unacceptable. So it was how would you say it was trained out of me in a way and didn't feel safe to express it consciously or unconsciously. So I repressed it physically and it manifested as a symptom. I can tell you something to share with you and you mm -hmm. like, uh, about the rage. Yeah. Um, it, it's like, it's very recent. Mm -hmm. like it was just like in March when I went back to therapy and I was not uh, identified with uh, anger mm -hmm. and it's funny because i remember till certain certain time i was always like 
I don't hate anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, completely disidentified from it. Exactly, but I think it was quite um, in the, in the beginning. It was forced, but then it was very. Um, can I say? Um, it was implemented with an intention of, oh, if if I hate someone, okay, I will be wasting more energy, and my energy is so precious that I won't be wasting it. it the idea is not wrong, mm -hmm. but I made myself disidentify mm -hmm. with with the anger and 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 I just discovered that you know mm -hmm. like by by uh, casualty life will show you doesn't it yeah and, and it was really well. funny because it's like i was very identified with me being very calm because very exactly we're very shanty shanty you Toxic know very exactly yeah. and and all of a sudden it's like oh i can be angry <laughs> and it was really funny and you really need that anger don't you because that anger is also what enables you to sell your services to say i am valuable i deserve to be paid yeah. this much money for this service it's something that i'm i'm still struggling yeah. but it's a process but yeah it is, it is. and it's, it's being able to say this is where i stand this is where you stand this behavior is okay with me this behavior is not and being able to stand up and say that so you need it's, that uh, it's hard if anyone struggle with with implementing boundaries this is really hard saying like I'm not okay with these. Mm -hmm. um, you need to pay me to do these. This is not what we agreed. It, it's really it's hard. It's a tricky process. Yeah. But you have to understand that it actually serves everybody for strong boundaries to be established because if somebody doesn't respect your boundaries because they weren't stated clearly enough, you then resent that person. And when that resentment builds and builds and builds to the point where you can't hold it anymore, you let it out. And that other person, if they really care about you, they're going to feel really upset that they've hurt you. Um, I would just add to your speech. Mm. Your marvelous speech that once you become aware, you are responsible to take action. So, but that's the thing, even when you're not aware, it's still your responsibility. Yes, but once you are aware, you, you really need to take an action. Mm -hmm. You can't just be aware and be like, Well, yeah, I have a problem, but you know, um, but, well, ultimately, you don't take responsibility, it's affecting you the most. True, it's going to sabotage your relationships, it's going to affect your health. It's not good. It's not good for anyone, but it does affect you the most. And when you, it is hard. So I, there's this, I know there's this sort of like idea that taking responsibility is hard. Establishing your boundaries is hard. Putting in the effort to heal is hard, but it's like, it's hard not having boundaries because you resent everybody around you and everybody's treading on glass around you on what's that saying? Eggshells, yeah. standing on eggshells around you. It's hard to take responsibility. But it's even harder to be a victim because you're completely disempowered and everything that's happening to you is just chance. You don't have any influence over anything that happens. You just have to deal with it. That's hard. And it's hard to heal. It's hard to put in the work and heal. But it's harder to stay sick. Staying sick is awful. So it is hard. But the alternative is even harder. You just get to choose, right? So choice is yours. Okay. I have a very tricky question to okay. ask you. I like tricky questions. <laughs> so you have a chronic, a chronic uh, illness, right? Mm -hmm. How did you manage to have a girlfriend? It's a good question. <laughs> I'll be honest. I think that's probably a question better answered by you. No. <laughs> um. I don't know how it was on your side. She's going to start blushing for everybody that can't see her just yet. <laughs> so this is part of taking empowerment, Take, taking your, your power, becoming empowered. So even in a place where I was very disempowered, living with uh, an abusive father, in a place where I wasn't able to fully express my masculine power, wasn't able to express my financial power, wasn't able to 
step into being myself. It's really hard to attract a partner when you can't really be who you are. So if it's something that you want, you have to set it as your intention. So you have to set it as your intention that you're going to do whatever it is you want to do. So it can be find a girlfriend, it can be get a partner, it can be heal. You have to set the intention. And once you set the intention, I truly believe this. The universe works under a law of duality. So anytime a problem is created, by definition, for a problem to be defined, the solution must also simultaneously exist. You literally cannot have one without the other. And if you're able to acknowledge the problem and say you want the solution, surrender the way the solution is coming to you. So I'm not saying don't work on it, but I'm saying don't be too specific in the way that it's delivered to you. State that it's what you want and then begin to align your behaviors in such a way where it's easy for the universe to bring you what you want. So for example, if you want to win the lottery, buy a lottery ticket. It's so simple, you know? You're never going to win it if you don't buy. And in my case, so when I was, when I was trying to find a, a partner, I was on lots of different dating apps. I was in a place where it was still really hard for me to even leave the house. So I don't even know what I was doing, but it was, my energy was aligned with my intention. I was behaving in a way that followed my, what I wanted. I wanted to find a partner. I was on dating apps. I also played video games. And it just so happened that somebody in my, somebody in my clan was also looking for a partner. But I was not looking <laughs> for anyone. Um, I was not really looking for anyone. Um, it's a bit serendipity, isn't it? Because I think even in your case, even though you weren't saying you wanted to find someone, you were looking for a certain way of feeling. Yeah, you can say that. And that's what's important, is identifying what you're looking for in a way of feeling and pursuing that and feeling what you can of it in your environment that you currently can, but pursue it and go after it and align yourself so that you can, you can do that. So say, for example, you want to, this is something that I'm, I'll bring in my own personal life right now. I'm looking to make new friends. And I know that the best way to make new friends is to go and do things that I like that other people would also be doing that they like. So if you like golf, go and join a golfing club. If you like football, go and join a football team. You'll make friends. We just got a dog, Alex. And he is obviously, he's a dog. So anytime there's another dog, he wants to go up and play with the other dog, which leads to interactions with other people. So I have absolutely no doubt we're going to be making friends very soon with dog owners because that's just the way it works. So if you want something, make sure that you are behaving in a way that's aligning you with what you want. You want to win the lottery? Buy a lottery ticket. You want to find a partner, start doing things that you would do if you had a partner. Go to places that you would go to with that partner. So I was playing video games, she was playing video games. We don't actually play video games anymore, but that's where we met. That's where we were, we were at and we've evolved together. So if you'd like an entrepreneurial partner that is interested in business or finance or marketing, go to marketing events, go to finance events maybe taken out, out of context a little bit because we're looking at, at healing. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're going to find your partner in your doctor's office. Maybe you'll find them at your chiropractor's office. I don't know. In a workshop. In a workshop, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So to wrap up these, these interviews, I'm fascinated. Um, you are one of the person that I most admire. Thank you. So it's really nice to to listen to you so what is one takeaway that anyone watching this could right now to improve their health oh that's a good one um i would say that this would fall into into the category of mindfulness it's all about being aware i would say that as, as we've established that healing is in essence the pursuit of authentic self-expression You need to become more aware of everything that's happening to you, everywhere you have unmet desires, everywhere you're behaving in a way that doesn't feel right to you. Like if you're identified with, I want to have a very high level of integrity. I want to be a very respected person. And you become aware that you're lying all the time, even if it's just a little lie. Like earlier, 
I, I, for me, integrity is very high priority for me. And I was talking through something with Joanna and she said, you're actually not being genuine there. There's a slight, and it was, it was, it was lying. It was lying in a way with a strong positive intention. I was doing it to me, what seemed like a good way. I was trying to help somebody. But Joanna said, that's not true. And I was like, actually, you're right. I don't need to overcomplicate the truth. The truth is the highest good. So become aware of, it's all about awareness. Just notice, notice things. Notice when your symptoms get worse around certain emotion or certain people. Notice when, notice patterns, observe things. Just become more aware of what's happening around you. Awareness is key. Awareness, you can literally substitute the word healing for awareness. They are the same thing. So instead of pursuing healing, healing is very, is very intangible. And I mean, it's tangible, but it's, it's very hard to feel like you're healing right this minute when everything seems to be going wrong. So instead of focusing on healing as a word, focus on awareness. How can I become more aware? And if you keep building your awareness, your healing will directly mirror it. So you can completely surrender healing. Just focus on becoming aware and healing becomes inevitable. So I have another question. Mm -hmm. And this question is, where can, uh, I'm listening to this podcast, okay? And I really want to work with you. Where can I find you? How can I contact you? Okay. How do you work? Okay. So absolute best option is to message me on Facebook. That is the place I'm the most active. You can just send me a DM. You can type my name, William Dickinson. You'll be able to find me. You can also go on YouTube and search William Dickinson. And basically any topic related to health, then you'll find a video. So if you need a little bit more info about how I work, that's a good place to, to get excited about, about the way that I do things. If you are feeling like you resonate with what I'm talking about here, I would strongly encourage you to check out my, my ebook five biggest blocks to true healing if i literally guarantee if you read through the five the five points and you implement every single point healing is guaranteed i can't tell you how quickly it's going to happen but i can tell you you are absolutely going to heal you will get where you want to go if you steadfastly stand by those five principles and in that in that book the fifth point i'll give you a little spoiler the fifth point is don't go it alone you will not heal by yourself. You need support. You need help. This is community. This is friends. This is family. And this is also practitioners. And I know how hard it can be, as, as you've heard from my own experience. It can be really hard connecting with the right practitioner. One of the services that I offer is a root cause consultation where you send me all of your lab tests, all of your medical history. You tell me all about your trauma. You tell me literally everything there is to know about you your disease, your health progression, like everything that's happening, diet, you send it over to me. We have a short consult so I can walk you through everything that's happening, help you understand why this is happening to you, how all of your symptoms are an intelligent response from your body. And then at the end of the session, I will either offer to work with you if I think this is something I can help you fix, or I will connect you with another talented healer that can. As you imagine, I, I have a podcast. I've worked with a lot of healers in the past. I have a very large network of healers that can help with basically any number of different chronic health conditions. So if on the off chance, I can't actually help you, I, I'm absolutely certain I'll be able to connect you with somebody else that will be able to help you. So make sure you read through that full book because understanding those five principles is really going to help when you get to a consultation. And then book your call and have a chat with me. And either I will be able to help you or I'll send you to someone who can. There absolutely is help. You can get help. If it isn't me, it's someone else and I'll help you find them. I'm absolutely certain of that. So you'll be able to find a link to download that book in the description below, in the, the, little, the little sort of description of the, of the video, as a video, either on YouTube or on the, on the podcast. Okay. So you needed uh, the, the role of the... An interview and yeah. guests as well. Yes. Okay. So last one. Yes. Okay. And um, the challenging one. Mm -hmm. uh, you get in an elevator and you have 30 seconds with a representative of your government. Mm -hmm. What would you say to positively influence the health of your nation?
Yeah, very, yeah, I love that question. <laughs> I would say, first of all, I would make a premise and say, the world is not broken. It doesn't need fixing. Everything's working out perfectly fine as it is. The world doesn't need to be fixed. It's not broken. Oh, I have so much to say. Okay, I would say that. So that's my first 15 seconds. Second 15 seconds, I would say, learn how to love yourself. Because I truly believe that people in positions of power are here to serve and they're here to serve the highest good of all. But it's very easy to get stuck if you don't truly love yourself. If you can love yourself, so love, synonymous with healing, synonymous with awareness. If you could be healing, if you can be loving, if you can be aware of yourself, you will be the best person you can be. And I don't know how to be a politician. I don't know how to run a country. Those people do, and they'll do a better job of it if they know how to love themselves. So I would comment that. So it was really good to have you. It was really good to even be in these place. Thank you. You're a lovely interviewer. <laughs> uh, I hope that you uh, all understood. Um, my my english uh, <laughs> that's your own insecurity your english is yeah. brilliant nobody even thought that until you said it um I'm just looking at how beautiful you are and i'm looking forward to be interviewing in this podcast yeah you'll be on for, for reiki for graphic design okay. and see you soon um thank you for being here and till the next episode bye ciao You've been listening to the Holistic Healing Collective with William Dickinson. Our passion is to heal with energy, holistic, and plant medicine using a science-based blend of mind, body, and spirit. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and we hope you've gotten some useful and practical information. Make sure to like, rate, and review, and tell a friend or two. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, find us on Facebook at the Holistic Healing Collective Podcast and support group. We'd love to see you. Take care, be well, and see you next time on the Holistic Healing Collective.